packed everything I owned and I moved down to Tennessee. See, I left everything I know in pursuit of a faded dream, dream. Without a clue, I was in for such a crazy long ride. I knew something good was right in on the other side. I took a couple of falls, picked up some bruises along the way, way. Still got a handful of scars to prove every single due I paid, paid, oh yeah. And when I finally thought I was on top, yeah, the bottom dropped out. Now I'm stuck face down, trying to find my way, way. Cleaning up the mess I made. I'll just have to start over again Over time this broken heart will mend oh. And then it took a whole lot more, more I started going at the things that were really worth fighting for And one step at a time I got back on the grind I had to start over at the back of the line I saw a light at the end of the tunnel Wasn't so far away, way Knew if I kept on pushing I'd make it there someday, day Oh yeah And when I finally thought was on track, yeah, the tunnel collapsed I'm underneath the rubble trying to find my way, way Cleaning up the mess I made I'll just have to start over again
my heaviest book And I placed you inside With each breath that you took Rested soft by my side Before your petals could fall And colors would fade I'd preserve your heart And press you into the pages mm -hmm. You're my yellow rose Beautiful Thank you, I love you Love you too No crying nope. <laughs> I read your note. That was cute. Which one? They put a note together that you wrote. Yeah. A memory or something? Yeah. That was really cute. Yeah. Like your experience? And... Yeah. <laughs> I love fun. you. I love you too. Knock, knock. Who's there? I don't have a joke. Okay.
afternoon. Welcome to this beautiful day. Welcome to the stadium and welcome to a great game. I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer as we begin. God, we are aware and we are in awe of your presence here today. We all stand here before you to celebrate, to honor, and to cheer on the beautiful game of marriage that you have designed for Matt and Ashley. We humbly and confidently ask you to bless this moment and to meet us in a very memorable way. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Who gives this beautiful woman to be married to this handsome man? I do. Matt, Ashley, it's here. <laughs> everything you planned for, everything you prepared, everything you dreamed about, everything you invested in, it's here. We're gonna celebrate that. Your family, your friends are here, your raving fans are here to cheer you on for this moment where one team meets another team and becomes another team, <laughs> one new team. This is an unplugged uh, service, and so in a, just a moment, I am gonna ask you to put your phones away. But before we get to that, I am gonna ask every single one of you, would you just pull out your phone, uh, pull out that uh, social media app, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, whatever you're using, whatever your favorite one is, um, this group right here, they're gonna, they're gonna post for you. They're gonna do <laughs> some things, and this is your moment. This is your moment to capture you being here and to celebrate with the hashtag, it's going down. So hashtag, it's going down. So team, are you ready to post for your fans, for, for the photographers? All right, go ahead, get your cameras out and let's celebrate this moment. Turn around. <laughs> oh my God, there's so many cameras, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you better do our poses, one, two, three. All right. Each Poses. individual camera. <laughs> First pose. One, two, three. Do whatever you want to do. Whatever you want. Go behind me. We're going to do the frozen thing. Do something fun. No kissing. Not yet. No kissing. Not yet. Okay, ready? And then you're going to spin. Nice. Creative. I like that. 30 more seconds, go ahead. Get all, get all the photos so you can. I know, you can do a lot in 30 seconds. All right, everybody come this way. Come here, come here, we need you now. Group photo, everybody come on in. Okay, all the way in. Act like you love me and hire you, please come forward. Yes. Okay. All right, on the count of three, play, let's everybody say play ball so we can cheer them on. Ready? One, two, three. Play ball. Yes. Oh, I 
<laughs> and one, one last one. I got to get a selfie here. We got to get a, so everybody come on in. I know my arm is short, but uh, we're going to do the best we can here. So I'm going to get a hi, everybody Ooh, get in. Up, All right. Everybody cheer them on on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three, say go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Oh man, that was fun. <clears throat> mm. Well, the day is here. The moment is here. And uh, it's been an honor to be your coach as you invited me in <laughs> to uh, help you not just prepare for today, but prepare for a marriage, a marriage where two teams are coming together to, to form one. Man and woman are coming together to form one flesh as, as scripture tells us in we're in a stadium, and so I can't think of a better way than to see how the, the institution, the blessing, the opportunity that marriage is, and how it relates to baseball. So that's going to be the theme <laughs> for today. And Matt, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. I, I got to commend you for your negotiation <laughs> skills. Um, Prior to this, I've heard rumors that you were at least single, maybe, maybe even double A material. Um, <laughs> but since you gave up all those uh, transitions, all those um, draft, draft rights, that's what they're, you gave up all those draft <laughs> rights to sign on Ashley to your team, I must commend you because signing her on to your team, you're definitely, definitely had her to Cooperstown. So I'm proud of you, I admire you, and uh, I'm proud of you. It was interesting as I got to know Matt and Ashley as we were preparing for this day. I was inspired by their love for each other. I was encouraged by their uh, ability to communicate with each other. And, and I was even a little, um, a little embarrassed, and I don't know if you two remember <laughs> this, but I asked you to move one of our sessions, and you, you said yes, but you also replied back in the text that, yeah, um, we would like to change because we were going to help a family uh, who was fostering some kids. We were actually going to help in, help stand in for them. And I felt really embarrassed, <laughs> but I was encouraged because of your generosity, because of your love and your selfishness for others. That was an inspiration to me. And I'm not going to embarrass anybody here by a show of hands, uh, whether you've helped out a family in foster care before, but you are setting the pace. You are setting a new trajectory for your family and a legacy of love and care for others. God said, it, it's not good, Matt, for man to be alone. And he created a woman out of Adam's rib in the beginning and you two are standing here side by side as an illustration of how God created man and woman. And you are a perfect picture of who God designed us as people to be and what the beauty of marriage can be. The book of Proverbs reminds us that whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. She is worth far more than rubies. Matt, you need to know that. She's worth far more than rubies. If you ever forget, just ask her. <laughs> She'll tell you. She'll remind you. It also tells us in Proverbs that her husband has full confidence in her and her husband has no lack of gain. There's an abundance that's going to come to you, Matt, because <laughs> you chose her. There's no lack of gain for you. And again, you're headed to Cooperstown, my friend. <laughs> you are headed there. I want to give us just three phrases that we could all remember. And yes, they're all tied to the game of baseball because as we all know about Matt, he plays on 15 different teams and leagues <laughs> all eight days of the week. So I don't know how you do it, buddy, but you, you definitely do it. So I want to give you just three phrases to remember this moment, to take into your marriage, to take into the life that you're both going to co-create together. And we're all here to celebrate. We're all here to cheer you on. But the first phrase I want to encourage you with and I want to challenge you with is to swing for the fences. Swing for the fences in your marriage. Swing for the fences in your dating relationship. 
in the words that you share with each other, the gifts that you give to each other, the memories that you create, the moments that you co-create together. Swing for the fences. I don't know if a coach ever told you that. If they didn't, I'm telling you today. Swing. <laughs> Swing for those fences because you know what it feels like to hit a home run. I've never hit one because I've not done that before, but you know what it's like. And in your marriage, you're going to have some home runs. You're going to have some moments that are like this, where your energy is high, people are cheering you on, and there's nothing that can mess up this moment. So swing for the fences. Aim high. God said that we could have an abundant life. Jesus came to give us life and, and an abundant life, not a minimalistic life, not a, not a woe is me kind of life, but an abundant life. That one where the ball goes over the, the fence and you just trot around the bases. So swing for the fences in your marriage. Swing for the fences in everything that you can. The second one, and you may know this a little bit better, but it's hit for the situation. You've heard of situational hitting. You got to know what's going on in the game. There's going to be times where you're going to have tons of joy. It's going to be great. And then there's also going to be times when it's really, really hard. That's just life. That's what we go through. We go through great times and we also go through hard times. And so I would encourage you both to know the situation, know what each other is going through. Know what each other is feeling. And in our times together, you did that very well as you learned more about each other, as we planned for your future. So know the situation. Sometimes what's going to be required is a bunt. It's not going to feel great. It's not going to be spectacular. But it's just something small that you can do for each other, that you can serve each other with, that you can honor each other. And so swing for the fences, yes. But also know the situation. Know how... Each other likes to come home from work. Do they like to be greeted with a hug? Do they like to be greeted with a kiss or something else? Get creative with, with that, but know the situation and then apply differently. So swing for the fences, hit for the situation. And the third phrase that I would encourage you both with is to embrace the sacrifice fly. Ephesians chapter five gives us this picture of what husband and wife are called into. We're called to leave our mothers and fathers, our families of origin and come together and to embrace this life that the apostle Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter five. He says this to the women first. He says, submit yourself to your husband because he loves you, because he cares for you. And I know that's not a trendy word, especially in this day and age to submit, but this is a mutual submission. And Paul says that you can submit to him because he loves you, because he is actually called to give himself up for you and to embrace the sacrifice, to enjoy the sacrifice. It might not be the acclaim of others, but you're willing to lay down your life, Matt, just like Jesus laid down his life for the church. That's what you're being called into. That's what this day represents. That beginning of sacrificial love, sacrificial grace, sacrificial mercy, leading her in that way. So embrace the sacrificial fly. Embrace the opportunity to serve each other. Embrace the opportunity to mutually submit even when you might not want to. <laughs> even when it's tough. Even when each other's going through a rough day or a rough week or maybe even a rough month. As we were talking in our uh, last session, we were dreaming about their 50 year wedding anniversary <laughs> and their celebration. This is the beginning of that. I know you've been together for a while. But this is the beginning of that dream that you're going to co-create together. The family that you're going to create. The legacy that you are going to leave. And so I want to encourage you just one last time as the thunder is booming. Swing for the fences. Hit for the situation. Know each other. And then embrace the sacrificial fly. Embrace what marriage truly is. It's the day-to-day -day honoring each other, submitting to one another, loving each other, and learning more and more about each other. Matt and Ashley have chosen to, get, to say vows to each other. A vow is many times verbal, but it's also written. And it's an opportunity to show value for and also to communicate the investment that they are making 
in each other and in their future. Matt and Ashley have created their own vows to share with each other. And so Matt, I'm gonna have you go first. High five, Luba. <laughs> So from the first time we met, I could tell there was something special between us. You've made such a huge impact in my life for the better, and I can't thank you enough. And now as we stand here five years later, I'm so excited to begin this journey with my best friend. I promise to always support you in everything you do as we grow together. I promise to fill every day with so much love, laughter, and all the smiles that you can handle. I promise to always make sure that you're well hydrated. <laughs> you, are the, you are truly the most amazing person and I'm so blessed that I am now and forever able to call you my wife. From now until forever, I promise to always love you with everything that I have. And no matter what life throws at us, I will always be right by your side. I love you, Ashley. Mine's kind of a novel. 1,880 days ago, the first question I asked you was at the box office at this exact field. That question was, how do you say your last name? <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know that this would be an important piece of information as we stand here today on our wedding day at the same exact location. Since the moment I met you, I knew you were something special to me. You became my biggest fan, my best friend, my calm, my comfort, and my constant. You showed me what my heart was missing and healed it in ways that I didn't know was possible. You showed the scared and guarded little girl in me that it's okay to trust, it's okay to love, and it's okay to just unwind. You have helped me grow in ways I didn't think that was possible. I'm gonna cry. I prayed to God for a man like you. I prayed for a man of ambition, strength, and loyalty. I prayed for a man, I can't read. <laughs> Okay. I prayed for a man who was patient, loving, and spontaneous. God answered my prayers, and he knew that you were exactly what I needed. I thank God every day for you. I promise to honor you, respect you, and love you every single day. I promise to support you mentally, physically, and emotionally. I promise to stand by your side through the easiest and hardest times of my life. I promise to never stop asking you to make me food when I become hungry to the point of no return. I promise to never use the I'm off duty excuse when you need to be nursed back to health, even if it's when you stub your toe and think your leg is going to fall off. <laughs> I can't wait for us to become mom and dad to our children one day and to show them what a healthy and loving relationship is. You are the best thing that could have ever happened to me, and I promise to love you for the rest of my life, as rest of our lives, as we begin our forever today. Those are some very powerful, loving, kind, and strong words to commit to each other. We should all be inspired to live that in our relationships. I think it's very fitting that we're in a baseball stadium. Um, Matt loves baseball, not more than Ashley, but a lot. Um, <clears throat> And I think it's fitting that uh, they give each other a gift. I mean, we're at a ceremony for their wedding. We're in a baseball stadium. So they've chosen to actually give each other gloves instead of rings today. So I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're both looking at me like, wait, you didn't get that. No, we didn't say that. But no, Matt and Ashley have given uh, each other rings as gifts. They've chosen to invest in each other uh, with the sign of their love, the sign of their commitment to each other, and frankly, a sign to the world that they're off limits. The trade deadline is over. No other team can experience what they are going to have and create together. And so do we have the rings today? Good job, Alec. I'm proud of you. Good I job. Appreciate that. Good job. Jam was in the brain, didn't you? The girls. The girls. There you go. Matt, I'm going to ask you to place that ring on her finger and uh, repeat after me. Say, I'm Matt. I'm Matt. 
give you this ring. Give you this ring. As a sign of my love for you. As a sign of my love for you. So the world may never doubt. So the world may never doubt. Our commitment. Our commitment. And our love. And our love. For each other. For each other. Ashley, I'm gonna ask you to take that ring and place it on his left ring finger and repeat after me. I, Ashley. I, Ashley. Give you this ring. Give you this ring. As a sign of my love for you. As a sign of my love to you. So the world may never doubt. So the world may never doubt. Our commitment. Our commitment. And our love. And our love. For each other. For each other. The Bible instructs us to leave our parents to join together as husband and wife and to become one. Ecclesiastes 4.12 tells us this, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Each of you two represents a strand and God represents that third strand. And in just a moment, you two are gonna braid three strands together as a symbol, as a sign that when three are together, you two and God, that your love, your commitment, and the strength of your relationship will only get better. Life's gonna throw you a bunch of curveballs, a bunch of sliders, all kinds of pitches that some of them you'll hit, some of them you'll miss. But when the stress comes and when the rope gets tighter, you would think it would be harder. But this is a visual that when the, the rope gets pulled tighter, you're closer together and your strength is exponentially greater in those moments. And so I wanna encourage you as you braid this rope together, and I'm not sure where you're gonna put it in your house, maybe where people will see it or wherever you choose to place it, you'll remember this moment. And as you braid in just a, a moment to show these people your commitment to each other and also your commitment to God, think about some of those hard times that you've been through and how you've been stronger together, not just the two of you, but with God as that third strand as well. Okay, so you don't know how to braid, do you? Nope. <laughs> we're good. So we're gonna twist, and then you twist. Okay, and then I twist. We have to go slow. Gray over white, or tan. <laughs> Stop right here. It's okay. I hold this one there. Make sure. Tips. Go slow. Go with the stand up there. I'll quickly. Great. Over. Great fight. There you go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yep. That doesn't know how to braid. White over. Outside over. Perfect practice for your favorite daughter. I'm not trying to do by yourself. <laughs> no. I've just already messed up. So. You're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> already did. Six times. Oh, it's good. Just the top. I did just do the top. No, oh, never mind. Ah, now we get a groove. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so we try to like... You tie yours once, so I'll tie this one once. Okay, then I'll just, I'll just tie, tie it to one that one. Even. Oh, we're good. Just make this look pretty. It's not gonna look pretty, boo. Because I was a little hang down like that. Okay, when you do the shot ski, you gotta flip it over first, because then we flip past it. Okay.
It's harder than it looks, isn't it? No, he just learned how to braid today. <laughs> nice. See, you're learning new things all the time. <laughs> well, this is the moment you've been waiting for. It's an honor to pronounce this, and it is by the authority given to be my God and by the great state of Wisconsin and in the presence of these raving fans that I now pronounce you husband and wife. Matt, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> you want to turn and face your fans? There you go, my friend. Thank you. I think I got it right. <laughs> sure. Now, would you please stand so I can introduce you for the very first time? Mr. and Mrs. Matt Gowan. From dawn till you see the night stars. Hi, and this is my sister in law. Values twisted, a whirlwind swirl. And so I say to all that Jesus, Jesus, he got my back. Matter of fact, he got my front too. Giving me strength till the day is through. True, and so I know love is this pouring out every day, hit or miss. And so when the going gets tough, I put on a smile and say, I gotta know. Yes, Hi, this is my wife. Hi, this is my husband. Will never go away. Hey. I've got a love, and it's always 
To the rhythm in your head, shake it off. Go on ahead, do a little boogie to the rhythm instead. Shake it off and go on ahead. Do a little boogie to the rhythm in your head. Shake it off, go on ahead and do a little boogie to the rhythm instead. Hey. To the rhythm instead, shake it off and go on ahead. Do a little boogie to the rhythm in your head. Shake it off, go on ahead and do a little boogie to the rhythm instead. Hey, I got a love that will never go away. Hey, I got a love. Always here to stay, and it's always here to stay. Party rock is in the house tonight. Everybody just have a good time, yeah. and we gon' make you lose your mind. Woo. Everybody just have a good time. Clap. Party rock is in the house tonight. In the club, party rock, looking for your girl, she on my jock. Now stop when we get in the spot, the booty moving weight like she on the block. With a drink, I got to know, tight jeans tattoo, cause I'm rock raw. Half black, half white, down and low, gang of money. Open yeah, I'm running through these halls like Drano. I got that devilish flow, rock and roll, no halo. We party rock, yeah, that's the crew that I'm repping on a rise to the top. No letting our Zeppelin. Hey, party rock is in the house tonight. Woo. Everybody just have a good time. Yeah, and we gon' make you lose your mind. Everybody just. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and rise out of your seat. Make some noise for the newly wedded couple. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, can I just say something crazy? I love crazy. All my life has been a series of doors in my face. And then suddenly I bump into you. I was thinking the same thing. Because, like, I've been searching my whole life to find my own place. And maybe it's the party talking or the chocolate fondue. <laughs> but with you. But with you, I found my place. I see your face. And, and it's, it's nothing, nothing like I've ever known before. Love is an open door. Love is an open door. Love is an open door. With you, with you, with you, with you. Love is an open door. I mean, it's crazy. What? We finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was gonna say. I've never met someone. So much like me, Jake's Jake's again. Our mental synchronization can have but one explanation. You and I were just meant to be. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to the pain of the past. We don't have to feel it anymore. Love is an open. something crazy? Will you marry me? Can I say something even crazier? Yes! Are we ready? All right. I, uh, I'm going to first talk about Matt, and then I'm going to go to Ashley second. But uh, I want to just say, to Matt, from a guy that loves Ashley, and from uh, what I've seen you and Ashley together, um, it looks like you guys are truly in love, and I appreciate that. Not only because I love Ashley, but because there's um, anybody who's a father of a daughter wants their daughter to be loved also. And I see that all the time, so thank you. Everybody clap for Matt. Thank you very much. Second for Ashley, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my wife. One day she decided we were going to be foster parents, and I, uh, I asked God that why I had four daughters already. <laughs> a small little house that couldn't hold another person in it and all that. And I went to a Bible study one time, and it was a book of James, and it said, take care of your widow and your orphans. And I said, God, that's not the answer I wanted. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ashley came into my life, and when you do foster parenting, you don't always get a diamond like Ashley. But uh, it was great. We went through some trials and tribulations, and... Um, she met up with her grandpa Joel and uh, it was uh, there was a time in my life I worried about her all the time finally when she was with grandpa Joel I never worried again not just because grandpa Joel but because she found her way in life too it was great so I thank you for being here my wife uh, thanks you guys for inviting me and everything else I love you guys I love your last name because it says go in but it really is it's go win you guys are always going to win so, thank you very much. So, I'm going to have to ask everyone to bear with me for a few minutes, just because the last time I spoke in front of more than like five people was back when I was student teaching in college, and I work in a warehouse now, so that's how that worked out. Um, the first time I met Matt, um, I spoke with him about my love of going fishing, and Matt was like, oh, I'd love to go with you too. I've never really done that. And one of the first times we ever went, uh, we stopped and decided to get breakfast on the way back from the bait shop, and we were waiting on our food, and I turned around, and Matt is literally just dancing in the middle of this fast food restaurant. <laughs> and I, I thought to myself, one of two things. One, this guy is having a really good day, or he's nuts. <laughs> This eventually graduated to the scale of Matt would be hanging halfway out of my car window while I was driving, singing at the radio at the top of his lungs and waving to random strangers. <laughs> and, you know, God forbid we would see a dog while we were at this park going fishing, which it was a park, so there were lots of dogs, because Matt would snap his neck to look at dogs. And he would even take it a step further as to tell me that he was going to steal some random person's dog. <laughs> 
he would he would call to me and be like, hey, you go distract the owner, and I'm gonna run up, grab the dog, and run off. I, Matt, I don't think that's allowed. He goes, it's okay, I'll be long gone before they figure out what happened. This went on for some time, and when Matt met Ashley, um, he said, hey, I want you to meet her, we're gonna go to Dave & Buster's, you should come along. And for those who have never really been to a Dave & Buster's, um, you basically, it's basically an arcade that also has like a bar and they sell food. You buy these little prepaid cards and you swipe the cards in the machines um, in order to play the games. Well, I'm buying this card and I look over and Ashley is literally using her entire body weight to shove Matt out of the way. <laughs> To buy this to buy this card and he just gives up and he walks over to me and I'm like is she trying to pay for this And he goes yeah I have to fight her to pay for things when we go out that was an automatic green flag in my book because we all know there's some women here who won't even pay for a drink at a bar and she's willing to spend money for an entire night of video games so automatic win and while we were playing these games that night Ashley um, or Matt and I were talking about how we would go fishing all the time and Ashley was like oh I've never really been, I'd really like to go. So she came with us, and when Ashley caught a fish, I grabbed it, unhooked it, and I kind of put it in front of her face, and kind of a fisherman's thing, I said, you want to give it a kiss? And she actually did it. <laughs> I've been fishing for many years before this, and I've never done that. You want to know why? Because fish swim in their own poo. <laughs> Ashley was the same in terms of dogs with Matt, but she would take it one step further, not actually stealing the dogs, mind you. Um, but every, every person we passed with a dog, Ashley would stop, can I pet your dog? Every person, without a doubt. And the first time that I knew that these two were gonna be together for a long time was when Ashley met my aunt and uncle and their dog. Most people, when you meet a dog for the first time, or, you know, people and a dog, you talk to the people, you pet the dog, and then you continue talking to the people. Ashley's first move was to lay down on the ground with the dog. <laughs> and she even went so far as she took her jacket and she put it behind her head to use as a pillow because she knew she was going to be there for a while. <laughs> what I'm getting at with all these stories is that these two are probably two of the goofiest people I've ever met in my life. But that's exactly why I love them. <laughs> because they bring so much happiness and fun to my life and I know many other people's lives here. So if I have one hope about this marriage is that Matt and Ashley's goofiest moments are still yet to come in the many years to follow. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they narc on each other to all of us in social media. <laughs> Love you guys, congratulations. Hi, for the people that don't know me, I'm Tyler. I'm co-best man with Matt for Matt's wedding. I would like to thank Matt and Ashley for including me in their big day. I've known Matt for over 15 years, going on 20 years, and I couldn't have asked for a better best friend. I met Matt when we played football in elementary school and the rest is history. Man, what? What's in those flowers? <laughs> the pollen. <sighs> the stories I could tell are endless, but I don't want to bore you. So I'll tell you just a few. When me and Matt were younger, and Matt still lived at home, and Melissa still lived at home, <laughs> we thought it was a bright idea to take her Marilyn Manson vodka off the top of the refrigerator and uh, make fireballs in the backyard of his dad's house. <laughs> I'm surprised we still have her hair to this day, Matt. Even though you just got yours done. Another story I have is Matt rolling all the windows down in the middle of winter going over the home bridge going over 100 miles an hour. Eh. Sorry, Dad. He, he's a responsible driver, Dad. Responsible over here, Rick. 
I'll leave that one alone. And lastly, when Matt would drag me along because I was lonely, and I didn't have many friends. Matt drug me along to many Brewers games against the Phillies because he likes the Phillies for some reason. So we had the bright idea of wearing Philly jerseys. And we're sitting in the bleacher section in right field, and these people turn around and go, are you guys from Philadelphia? I'm like, no, we're, we're from Pennsylvania. <laughs> and they were like, really? I'm like, yeah, we just, drew, we just flew in last night just for this game because we really want to see the Phillies. All in all, Matt has given me great memories over the years that I will cherish the rest of my life. So thank you for that, Matt. To Ashley, you look absolutely stunning today. And Matt is a lucky... <sighs> Matt is a lucky, lucky man to have you by his side. As I said before, Matt gave me great memories as a best friend, and I'm sure he will give you even greater memories as your husband for the rest of your life. Before we toast, you two, could I ask Matt to put his hand on top of Ashley's? Sorry, Matt, this is the last time you'll have the upper hand. <laughs> In all seriousness, I wish you all the best in your marriage, man and Ashley, and I love you guys. If I could have everyone raise their glasses for man and Ashley, and cheers to life full of love, laughter, and happy ever after. Hello. First, I have to say thank you to everyone for being here who have helped make this day so special. Lots of time, love, and money put into this. Thank you to the wedding party, family, friends, and Matt and Ashley. And also thank you to their awesome wedding planner, Diana. I don't know where you are right now, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you're good. Okay, so uh, some might be wondering who I am. This is really loud. Um, I am Shelby. I am Ashley's sister. As Ashley made, asked me to make a speech, I had to go back into my memories and ask my sisters when the first time we have had Ashley in our family. She is not our blood sister, but she is more than that. Um, so as I texted my sisters, um, my oldest sister, Candace, let me know. She remembered the exact time Ashley was brought into our home onto our blue carpet. And that was the best day of my life. Blue <laughs> <laughs> it clicked. I don't remember because I was so young. And two, I've never known a life without Ashley. We did not, we did normal sister things. We'd fight, we'd play, and annoy my parents by using all of their dish soap on our trampoline. We went to McDonald's every Wednesday for so many years, and then church right after. We spent a line of time at the Admirals games. Thank you, Grandpa Joe. We loved our shows, George Lopez. Yes, weird. We loved our movies, but there was always that one stuck out to my mom. She'd turn on for us all the time, more often than others, Lilo and Stitch. There was this little guy who just needed some love and a family to show him he was so much more than another number. That was my mom's goal. 
to make sure Ashley felt loved, safe, and part of our family. Ohana means family, and family means... <laughs> you can't look at me like that. <laughs> no one is left behind or forgotten. And that was just it. Ashley was in and out of her lives for years and years, and the minute my mom had an opportunity to go and grab her, she did. The minute my mom could go help, she didn't think twice. My mom made sure there was always a house to call a home for anyone, especially Ashley. Ashley and Matt have also inherited this trait to make sure their house isn't just a house, it is a home. I feel welcomed, my kids feel welcomed, everyone feels welcome. I couldn't thank Matt more for making his way into my sister's life at the perfect time. Matt, thank you for making sure she feels safe, loved, and secure. Even if she's so stubbornly independent, <laughs> you're still a shoulder she needs, a partner to be equal with, and a place to call home. So cheers to the bride, the groom, and Mama Shiv, because she would be so proud of you. You may have uh, heard of Grandpa Joel. This is Grandpa Joel. <laughs> Listening to the, uh, the sermon today at the uh, ballpark, I was worried because part of my talk is going to include baseball also. Uh, I, was, I was watching a, a movie called, uh, uh, I forgot what the movie was, <laughs> Field of Dreams. And I thought of Matt being there and seeing Ashley come through the corn, cornfields. And Matt would say, who are you? And she says, well, I'm Ashley. I can keep a scorebook. And Matt said, all right, that's my girl. You know, and the rest was history. You know, she could coach a team. She knew the strategies, you know, and she could, could, could coach. One of the things I was surprised to hear is that, Matt, that Ashley was spending money on video mach machines and video games because Ashley's one of the most frugal people that I've met, <laughs> you know. She would negotiate her own prices on her cars. I would take her to, to, to buy a car and she would talk to the man and the man would talk to me and I'd say, talk to her. And he'd come to a price and Ashley would pull a big wad of bills out of her pocket and count them out to the guy. Okay, it was her deal, right? You know. When uh, Ashley was probably 15 or 16, she started working with me at different festivals. And the thing that impressed me with Ashley, she'd be the youngest person there, but she was the coolest under fire. We'd be busy and people screaming at her and everything, and Ashley just kept ringing away and not worrying about it. Okay? One of the things that's neat tonight is seeing a lot of people that I know have influenced Ashley's life. And anyhow, yeah, this uh, pollen is pretty thick up here. <laughs> <laughs> But it, 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 I've been to other weddings where people were there that just, you know, knew somebody. But here, there's a majority of people here in attendance that have really helped Ashley through some t trying times. And, and I appreciate that, and her family appreciates that, too. Uh, I, I didn't know which way I wanted to go with this tonight, you know, what I really wanted to say. But Ashley wanted a cat one time when she was living with me, and I didn't want a cat. I never had a cat, okay? <laughs> so she started going to the different humane centers and found a cat. And she says, I want you to come and see this cat. I really like it. So we go see this cat. It's 20 pounds. Okay. <laughs> I could have rode the thing home. <laughs> so Ashley says, I like him. Can we take him? And I said, well, you know, I'm allergic to fur. She says, spend some time with him. See what you think. So I spend... 20 minutes with him, didn't itch or anything. I said, okay, we can take him home, but if I start to itch and sneeze, he's gone. And she says, no, you're gone. The cat's gonna stay. <laughs> you know. So I took this cat and started teaching him how to fight. 
Okay. <laughs> and he'd be on his back trying to hit me and bite me, and I had little puncher marks all over my hand. And he turned out to be a pretty good fighter. You know, he could roll pretty good. Still okay. is. He still is, you know. But I, again, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate everybody coming out. I uh, hope everybody, everybody's having a good time. Ashley and Matt, you know, I wish you all the luck. And I'm still in the neighborhood, Matt. You know, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Good evening. I, I found out Wednesday I was supposed to give a talk today, so thanks for the advance notice. Um, <laughs> my fan club, I'll you guys checks in the mail. Um, I don't even know where to start because I don't know how to put into words. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Deep breath. Um, Somebody that means the world to you. Um, you started out my little buddy, uh, became my best friend. And most people go to stadiums to watch their favorite baseball players and pay a lot of money. And I got to live with mine. Um, three words come to mind when I think of Matt. It's uh, family, friends, and baseball. <laughs> uh, Matt's first... Uh, view of family was his sister Melissa and she asked me to mention a story so I'm going to get that out of the way now um, Matt and Melissa were in a car driving down Melissa's playing music and Matt wanted to change the song so Matt takes the phone and uh, Melissa said well my password is my birthday so, so Matt's furiously typing into the phone Melissa's driving down the road Melissa realizes that the song's not changing Matt's still typing on the phone. Melissa's still like, well, what's going on with the music? She's like, Matt, what are you doing? He goes, your password doesn't work. Oh, and she's like, well, it's my birthday. What are you putting in? And he said, well, 0410. Now, Melissa's birthday's in August. <laughs> so Matt taught us that August is the fourth month of the year. <laughs> so he finally put in the right password and got the music changed. Um, the second, I want to make, give an example of how loving and caring Matt is. Um, he was at a 16th birthday party. Melissa had her friends over for a birthday party. And this is before the color run was a thing. So Melissa had all her friends over with white t-shirts, white shorts. They went back in a field and they threw colors at each other. And they came back looking like, you know, a kid had like finger paints or something. They were all just head to toe covered. Matt gave of himself, sacrificed himself, held that hose, and sprayed down every one of those girls until they were clean. Now, did I mention they were in white t-shirts and white shorts? Okay. So, that, that's the kind of brother Matt is. He would do anything for his sister. That the, Yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, he did. He sure got them all clean. He, with a big smile on his face. <laughs> um, I met Matt 29 and a half years ago. Um, we, were, we were in the same hospital room. And uh, you know, he came out in a splash. And I won't, won't get into that story, but anybody that wants to know, I could explain that later. Um, <laughs> Um, Matt had the, the privilege of growing up in a family atmosphere, um, thanks to my mother, who is sitting over here. She, yep. Um, most people have family reunions with their cousins. Matt was fortunate enough to have a family in Madison where his cousins actually turned into his brothers. Um, these kids were really, really close. One of them is up here on stage today, David. Um, the other two are in the first table over here. And he had a, a second mother and father in his Aunt Patty and his Uncle Ken. I don't know where Ken... Oh, Ken's hiding in the corner over there with Luke. Um, so he, he really had a loving, a loving relationship. Um, as Matt was growing up, he met this punky little wrestler football kid in fifth grade who turned out to be Tyler, <laughs> who, 
who, who ended up, I'm pretty sure you were living in my basement for a few years, right? Your mom would call just to check on you? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, so again, Matt turned friends into family. Uh, Matt then started playing baseball, and he was lucky enough to play for a, an organization called the Wisconsin Rockhounds. Uh, he played with them for a few years, and again, his players or his teammates turned into family, and some of them are here at the table over here. Ben's here, and his wife, Haley, and his sister, you know, Tiff. Yeah. <laughs> um, Matt had a lot of success. They won the World Series in uh, Owensboro. He was one, he pitched the semifinal game and Ben got the MVP. Matt was on the all tournament team. So these kids have had a lot of success together. Um, Matt turned from the Rock Hounds. He went into high school. His high school teammates became his brothers. Um, one thing I was a coach, I tried to instill your teammates or your family. You, you go to war with them. You love them. I don't care what happens out of here, but once you're with the team, that's your family. And he took that to heart. Um, he then went to college and he played for Wisconsin Lutheran where one of his teammates, again, introduced him to Alec. Alec became his family. Um, so again, baseball led to another relationship for Matt. Um, Matt then started playing on 338 softball teams. <laughs> I believe, and Josh was on the team, so Josh became family that way. Matt now plays for a couple of adult teams. There's a bunch of them in the back back there. Um, and there's a couple representatives up here, Abro and Austin from the Chicks and the Juice. So again, baseball became his family. Um, the one thing Matt didn't have was somebody to spend his life with other than me, and I'm sure he didn't want to do that forever. Um, so uh, Matt's temperament and his habits changed all of a sudden. His two hour visits to the bathroom were down to a half hour. He, when, yeah, when he was in the basement, he stopped talking to himself or people on his headset for his games. And it was like, wait a minute, who are you talking to? Is that a girl? Don't talk to me like that. Well, your, your voice changed though, so the operation was a success. Thank you. So that, that's when he met Ashley. And everything about Matthew changed. Um, it would be like pulling teeth. If you said, I love you, Matt, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Melissa would made a game out of it. I love you, Matt, I love you, bro, I love you. And Matt would just sit there and look at her. Once Ashley was around, the I love you started to flow. You know, hugs started to flow. All of a sudden he got manners. He knew what they were, but now he was using them. <laughs> so, Whoa. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a miracle what she did with him. Uh, the first time I met Ashley, I think was the 4th of July. And Ashley called me dad. And at first it really warmed my heart. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, she's 21. 22 years ago, who did I know? <laughs> Where was I? Is Matt with his sister? What, what's going on here? Um, but everything was good. I was married, nothing like that happened. So it was actually a girlfriend. She was just being nice. Um, and then things progressed between the two of them. And like I said, Matt was just happy as I've ever seen him. So Ashley, thank you very much for that. Um, it got to a point where I've never met anybody like her in my life. She had this thing planned out. I'm in, in nursing school. I'm going to work at Walgreens. I'm going to work at Taco Bell. I'm going to work here because they all give me scholarships for college. And that's how I'm going to start paying for this. And I'm going to get it done by this time, this time, and this time. And then after that, I'm going to graduate nursing school. And then I'm going to go work. And then I'm going to do this and this and this. I'm like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> but she's got everything planned out and she, and she succeeded in everything. I've never seen anybody like it. Um, then came a time where she graduated from nursing school and she was living with Grandpa Joe. This does not relieve you of your debt. You still owe me for a year and a half of rent. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But as she was living in Racine, she got a job at St. Luke's, so she moved in in our house, and she was living in my basement with Matt, and, I, with Matt. Um, and she became even more of a family. Um, every, all my family absolutely adores her. She, the biggest fear for any of my kids or any of my nephews is to bring their significant others to a family get-together and have them exposed to my brother and I at the same time. <laughs> If, if you really had to like this person or trust them in order to do that. Ken started firing off on Ashley. Ashley just fired right back. I'm like, this kid's a keeper. <laughs> you know, nobody intimidated her. Now, in all due respect, Allie had already softened him. So you had a little help, but you held your own on that one. Um, then in my basement, she turned my basement into Walgreens South. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> this kid could say, you were talking about her being frugal, Joe. This kid could walk into Walgreens with $5, walk out with four fifty, and have six carts worth of merchandise. No, not doing. She's got coupons and employee discounts and this and that. I got it from when it was on discount rack or whatever. I had Irish Spring in my basement for years. I still have some down there. That and iodine, you still never picked that up, by the way. All right. Um, so Ashley again became part of the family. They grew, they bought a house together. Uh, they finally moved out in April. They started their life down there. And that brings us to today. Again, Ashley, I can't thank you enough for the change in Matt, making him so happy. You make all of us happy. We love both of you guys. So thank you very much. Um, there's three things I'd like to ask right now. Uh, Austin, can you guys grab the box? Um, I had some baseballs made for this occasion. There's an uh, inscription on the side of it. It says, it's going down, which is their hashtag. There's a purple home plate with the year 22 in it. And then it says, Matt and Ashley, August 13th. So what I would like to do is Matt's teammates are going to be handing these balls out to each table. And I'd like each table to autograph the ball, please. So all your autographs are going to be on the ball. There's also a tag on the plastic bag if you could write your table number on it. And then we're going to collect them all, and I'm getting a display case for them, and they can display them all. This will be like a baseball guest book. I don't really care. <laughs> so, so if everybody could please autograph them, put them in the bag, and then there'll be a box right over by the table when you walk in. We can put them in there once they're completed, and that will be their guest book. So I thank you very much. Um, Drew, do you have your glove? Um, I've been catching pitches for Matt for a lot of years. Uh, probably the very first one he ever threw. Uh, thousands. My garage has dents in it. My knees have dents in them. Um, but I would like the honor of catching his first pitch as a married man. So again, thank you very much. Now that was my sentimental thing. For, thank you for putting up with that. I appreciate it. So if we could all raise a glass to Matt and Ashley, a lifetime of love and happiness. I love you both. Thank you. What a great dad. <laughs> okay, so we just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and enjoying this fantastic party with us, showing us all the love and caring and... I mean, I, I'm sorry. I suck at emotions, okay? <laughs> it's true. So, but I just want to thank all of you guys for coming out and celebrating with us. And let's just have one big old party tonight. Yeah. Kind of the same thing here. Thank you, everybody, coming. Kind of like people were saying, I have... People here from all different stages of life, so does Matt, and just really nice to see everybody together and all the support we do have. Um, I just also want to mention really quick, um, we appreciate all the photos on the wall. It'll be going on through the night. And if you didn't sign our guest board over there on the table, we would appreciate it. And the photo booth is open as well during dancing. And a one, two, three. It's, it's a bowing down. down. Woo! 
Wow. I don't have any stories like that catching dad, but that was that was amazing. I've said a lot today already. Um, they invited me to come up and just to share one more thing as a toast to the happy couple. <clears throat> and just one, just give me one more minute. And I'm reminded of a night like this, a celebration of a wedding a future together. And uh, Jesus, when he was on earth, he prayed really only a few things for us as his people. And the one thing in John 17 that he prayed for was unity. And from the beginning, from our first pre-marriage counseling to the text back and forth, uh, all of that, I saw unity in, in both of you. And Tammy and I have been married for 20 years. And if we've learned anything in the last 20 years, it is whether we're right, we're wrong, we're going through good times or hard times, as long as we are together. And as long as we're in unity, even if we're both wrong. Um, so that would be my challenge. That would be my prayer for you is that you be in unity on the baseball field, at work, wherever you are. And so that would be my toast to you is to be in unity, that Jesus would bless you as you are in unity. So one last toast. Would you raise your drinks to the happy couple? And can we just say unity to them? Unity.
Let's get a nice big round of applause for the beautiful couple up here. You always made me breakfast, chocolate chip pancakes and scrambled eggs. Raised me as your own, took me to every soccer game I played. You taught me how to fish. I didn't believe you when you said the hula popper works, so I put all the worms on the hooks instead. You showed me what a man is and taught me how to love like you. You walked me down the aisle and I wanted our dance to be special too you're my superhero you don't need a cape you've got a heart full of gold in your smile every day and i will always be that girl playing soccer Get a nice big round of applause for a beautiful dance between a bride and her grandpa. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself. What a wonderful world I 
glassy skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. Some time now. Hit a couple walls, that's a time out. Grateful for the ups and the downs now. Keep moving on, yeah. Keep moving on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started off with the local shows, now it's Google Maps. Overseas, I couldn't speak the language, had to Google that. Yeah. All the numbers looking so low, couldn't do the math. Then God came and took it, took it, took it, took it to the max. Yeah. Took some losses. I done took some losses. I was about to give it up. But wifey told me trust the process. Benja hit me with the blueprint. Four years later, now I'm popping. Now the team ain't never stopping. We ain't got no other options. Ooh, sign with Amplify. Sign with Amplify. Now we on the rise. Now we on the rise. Ain't wasting no time. Ain't wasting no time. God, he had a plan. I just had to make it mine.
we made. Thank God we made. Thank God that we made. Thank God we made. Thank God we made. Thank God we made. Thank God that we made. Thank God 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 we
It's real nice having you as neighbors. Thanks for the food. <laughs> Congrats, Matt and Ashley. I know we've only been a part of, at least I've only been a part of your lives for a very short time. But I'm hoping that from this point forward, especially post-pandemic, we'll be able to be together as a family. And you guys are welcome over to the new house anytime. We love you. Congratulations. We're so happy for you guys. Love you. <laughs> congratulations. So happy for you both. Love you guys. Hey, congratulations, Galloway. <laughs> and another one of the family. Congratulations, congratulations Matt Ashley. Go wins. I love your last name. Go oh, yeah. wins. Woo! Been with you all night. You're welcome to the beer and everything else. Keep grinding, you two. You guys are amazing and you always will be. Love you. Congratulations. Yeah. Hi. Video your life. This is my husband. This is my wife. <laughs>